Hey, what is up guys? Murgerman4 here, back with part 2 of the Fossils and Archaeology Mod Showcase. And in this part of the showcase, we will be looking at the blocks and items. So we're just going to jump straight into it here with the naturally spawning blocks. So each of these blocks shown here will spawn naturally in your world. Um, and with the exception of the Paleorphe Log, the Paleorphe Leaf, and uh, the Ancient Wood Stairs, None of these blocks can be crafted, and the only way to obtain them uh, would be either via creative or by finding them naturally. And so uh, we're going to go in order here from left to right, and so here we're going to start out with the fossil. Alright, the fossil. This block is the crux of the mod. Everything you can do in the mod depends on the fossil block. Uh, they spawn fairly commonly underground in veins between the size of coal and iron and you can actually only mine them with an iron pickaxe or better so if you want to have some pet dinos you're gonna have to get some materials first uh, but when you mine them they have chances to drop one of multiple things uh, there's a 40 percent chance that it will drop bone like a, a bone 23 percent chance that it will drop a relic a uh, 22.5% chance that it'll drop a biofossil, a 10% chance that it will drop a skull, 10% chance that it'll drop cobblestone, 5% uh, chance that it will drop a broken ancient sword or a broken ancient helmet, and a 0.1% chance that it will drop a scarab gem. So a lot of those items are from the mod, and so we'll explain them later on in the items part of the showcase. So here we have the permafrost and the ice stone. Now, uh, th these two are quite connected, and uh, you can find permafrost and ice stone naturally underground. The permafrost is uh, kind of like frozen dirt, and ice stone is obviously frozen stone. So, uh, the permafrost, it can only be mined uh, with a shovel or with your hand. And so, uh, it, it will spawn naturally and then freeze the stone around it into ice stone. So, when you mine the permafrost, uh, you'll get one of multiple things. Uh, the, the drops can include fern seeds, frozen meat, bones, books, and skulls, and with the ice stone, it'll just drop cobblestone. Uh, unless you have silk touch on either your shovel or pickaxe, in which case you'll get the ice stone or the permafrost. And in uh, hot places like the desert, the permafrost can actually uh, sometimes melt into just regular dirt. So, if you're planning a building with permafrost, don't do it in the desert. These two, uh, the tar and the paleorphe stuff, is located in the same area, so we're going to combine them kind of together. Alright, so Paleorphes and Tar. We're going to start off with the Tar. Uh, so, the Tar will spawn in swamps in pits like these, kind of like lava pits. And so, uh, these are really bad if you fall into them, because they act kind of like quicksand. You really cannot get out. Uh, you cannot break them. Interestingly, they act like solid blocks, except for the fact that you can actually like sink through them. Uh, and any items that will touch them will be destroyed. And funnily enough, uh, none of the mobs are programmed uh, with an AI to know that tar is dangerous. So they'll, they'll just kind of saunter into it and then die. And so it'll do about half a heart of damage to you every second, I believe. So these things are actually worse than lava because you can't swim in it. And uh, so I'll, I'll demonstrate death. Oh yeah, in creative you can actually like break the blocks like that. And they don't flow together. Uh, but anyways, so uh, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate death in here, but first I'm going to go on to the Paleorphes because we're already here. I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I, I just call it Paleorphe. It's a big word or whatever. Um, but the, these are these huge trees. They'll spawn in swamps. I don't know if they spawn anywhere else, uh, but th these do naturally spawn, but you have to actually activate the config file for them to do so. Uh, so... You'll, you'll go to your .minecraft, go into config, open up the fossils folder, and then set Paleorphe spawn or whatever it is to true. And so these things, they're just like normal trees. They have leaves, they've got all their wood. You can collect their wood and make planks and stuff out, out of the logs. And the leaves will drop uh, Paleorphe saplings and apples. And so... Yeah, I'm going to demonstrate the death by tar now. So I'm just going to get some items in my inventory first, just to demonstrate the devastating effect that it has. Alright, here we go. So, as you see, if I check that, it, it dies. And I really can't move. I'm trying to jump, 
But I, I, I can't do anything. You're stuck. You're doomed. You can't break it. And that, that's tar for you. <laughs> it says you suffocated in a wall. Now, the volcanic rock is found near lava pits. It doesn't spawn there all the time, uh, but it will spawn near lava sometimes. And uh, so these blocks are really not that useful. They're just really for decor and uh, for crafting other blocks for decor. So, um, yeah, they're mainly useless. Uh, now here we have the ancient wood. So this stuff uh, doesn't spawn naturally in the world per se, rather in a structure that spawns in the world. Uh, they'll spawn in academies, and so we'll get more into that in the next part with the structures and other things. Uh, but anyway, so these are mostly just decor blocks. You've got the ancient wood, which can only be found there. You, you cannot get ancient wood any other way in survival. Uh, you've got ancient wood pillars, which, once again, you cannot get in any other way in survival. You have to go to the academy. And ancient wooden stairs. And uh, so these th three blocks will spawn naturally throughout the academy. Uh, and you can actually craft ancient wood stairs, but it's with the ancient wood. So you're, you're going to have to go to the academy anyways if you want to be able to do this in survival. Uh, but they look quite neat. Uh, it's a bit, a bit different from the regular wood stuff. Alright, there's one more block that does spawn naturally, the ancient stone brick. It wasn't listed on the wiki for whatever reason underneath it. Um, but anyway, so that these will also spawn in academies, just like the ancient wood will. And uh, you cannot craft these. The only way to find them in survival is by going to the academies. Next we have two mineable uh, blocks. Now. Uh, one of these isn't really blo a block, the Paliorface uh, sapling, however, uh, I'm going to include it here anyways because that's what it's listed under on the wiki. And what mineable means is that these are drops from other blocks. Uh, so we have the skull, which is mostly useless, it's just decoration, just kind of sits there. And it is a drop from fossils, I believe, and one or two other blocks, I think. And the Paleorface sample, uh, sapling can be planted on grass, and uh, it can also be obtained via the cultivator, I believe. Uh, but the main way, uh, like the, the block drop of it, is from the Paleorfe leaves. And so these will grow up into the Paleorfe trees that we saw in the natural uh, block section, and the leaves will drop them. So, yeah. All right. So these are all the craftable blocks in the game. Each of these blocks uh, you are obviously able to craft. And so I know these look like V's here, but they are arrows pointing downwards so that you can see the names of all these here. And so we've got an analyzer, a cultivator, also known as a cult vat, culture vat, something like that, an archaeology workbench, a drum, a feeder, a sifter, a skull lantern, um, Pelagorfe planks, stairs, and a slab. Uh, there is an ancient wood plate, ancient wood slab, volcanic brick, volcanic stairs, volcanic slab, ancient stone stairs, and ancient wood or er, stone slab. Uh, I put the wrong name there. All right, so uh, we're just going to jump right into the crafting and uses of all of these. Alright, so we're going to start with the analyzer here. So this is crafted with four iron ingots, a relic scrap, and a... Oh. Okay, so we're going to start with the analyzer here. This can be crafted with two iron ing or four... Oh. Okay, so we're going to start with the analyzer here. It can be crafted with four iron ingots, a relic scrap, and a biofossil. Uh, now, the analyzer is really important to be able to get stuff done in the mod, uh, so it's create, uh, it's used to create many of the things in the mod. So uh, there are four different things I believe that you're able to put into the analyzer, uh, and those are biofossils, relic scraps, frozen meat, and leather. And so e either of those four, uh, you'll be able to get stuff from it. So let's take a biofossil for example. Oh, wait, no, there's other stuff. I'm an idiot. Ugh. 
Okay, so we're going to start with the analyzer here. It can be crafted with four iron ingots, a relic scrap, and a biofossil. And this block is very important to the mod. Many of the things needed to spawn the dinosaurs and get everything to work is used by uh, w with the analyzer. And so uh, you can place multiple different uh, items into the analyzer and get back mod stuff. So you can put in uh, biofossils, relic scraps, frozen meat, leather, uh, dinosaur meat, or, or a any of the meat in the mod. Uh, you can put in vanilla meat and also feathers. And so each of these different things will yield different results in here. So let's just take a biofossil and we'll put it in here. And you'll see that this is starting to go. And so you can put nine different types of things in here at the same time and it uh, has four output slots so you can make a lot of things at the same time uh, so each different thing can yield different results as I said so for the biofossil you can get DNA fern seeds sand bone meal or bones as you see we got bone meal there uh, the relic scraps you can get a stone tablet or gravel frozen meat you can get some mammal DNA or mammal meat uh, leather you can uh, get cow or horse DNA with the mod meat, you can get DNA of the meat type of the mod, so, or mob. So, for example, if I got Triceratops meat, I would get Triceratops DNA. Uh, vanilla meat, which is the same as uh, the mod meat, except with the vanilla mobs. And then feather will give you uh, chicken DNA. Oh, and there's also one more, wool, which will give you sheep DNA. So, as you see, we got some Triceratops DNA there. And uh, we can actually use that with the cultivator. So the cultivator will create eggs slash fossils uh, out of the DNA. Uh, and so the cultivator is crafted with four glass, a cactus green, water bucket, and three iron ingots. And so uh, you can put in your DNA and any of the following items, either raw beef, fish, eggs, milk, biofossils, dodo eggs, uh, raw chicken, raw pork, puffer fish, clownfish, or raw salmon. And I don't think it matters which one of those you put in, as long as you put in one of them, or one or two, just to be safe. You'll put that in there, and slowly, uh, it'll take some time, uh, but you'll eventually get an egg. You can actually hatch to be able to uh, get your dinosaur into the world. Uh, now, I believe uh, if you do this with a mammal, with mammal DNA, it will give you an embryo, but I'm not entirely sure. Let me just check that. Uh, and this also does work with mammal DNA, so if you want to put some mammal DNA in there instead, then uh, you'll get n not an egg, uh, but an embryo, which you can get your, an uh, your mob into the world with. Uh, now we're going to move on from this and check up on this later because this takes quite a bit of time and we're going to move on to the archaeology workbench which you can craft with a crafting table and paper. Uh, so with the archaeology workbench what it'll do is fix uh, broken relics uh, so pretty much broken ancient swords or broken ancient helmets and so you'll put in some relic scraps uh, down here to uh, kind of power it and then you'll put in the broken ancient helmet or the broken ancient sword uh, let's put in the sword, and it will fix it. And so, uh, these things drop from fossils, I believe, and you, you can just use them as either protection or weaponry. And this thing also takes some time, so, like uh, the cultivator, we're going to leave that and move on to the next one. So this one here is the drum. It can be crafted with five wooden planks, doesn't matter what type, redstone, and three leather, leather and so uh, th this is used to order tame dinosaurs. Now uh, I kind of uh, I didn't go into detail in this in part one I don't think, uh, but pretty much there are three different orders that you can give dinosaurs. Um, the Dinopedia will show you which item you can give them orders with. So uh, if you click on the mob with the Dinopedia, you'll be able to see which item you can order them with. But there are three different orders: uh, if free move, which it'll just move around like a normal mob. Uh, follow, which it'll follow you around and stay where it'll stay, pretty much just where it is, pretty self-explanatory. Now the drum, every time you right-click it, it'll change the drum order, and so there, there are multiple different items you can click it with that'll automatically send that order to specific types of tamed dinosaurs. So if you left-click it with a stick, it will give the order to Triceratops within 30 blocks, so why don't we 
Just showcase that here. There we go. So you'll see, uh, I'm gonna, I gotta tame him first. And, does he love me? I don't know if he loves me or not. This could be a problem. Yeah, okay. That was loud. Okay, so uh, you can see the drum order is at stay right now. So if I do that, oh, sorry, that was a right click. So if I go into survival, you're going to have to go into survival, otherwise you'll destroy the block. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see that, that sent that to, oh, it's more than Triceratops. Nice. Okay. Thank you, Wiki, for not telling me the whole story. So in that case, instead of going off my notes, I'm just going to take the item and then you can see which dinosaurs it will give that order to. So if you right click with a bone, oh that was the wrong thing, it'll leave it uh, Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Compsognathus, Dinonychus, Allosaurus, and Sarcosuchus, and uh, with the uh, stick it was Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and the Gallimimus. And so the next one is an arrow, uh, which will just send it to a plesiosaur. And the skull stick, which we'll show how to craft a bit later on. Ordering T Rexes to breakfast. So I don't know why you'd ever use that, but whenever you do use that, uh, then any T Rexes within the vicinity will come and attack you. And so you'll see, here we go, we've got our Triceratops egg now cultivated. And actually, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is if the culture vat uh, actually fails, which it can fail, then it'll spawn the mob Failersaurus, which I talked about in part one of this mod showcase. Uh, and archaeology workbench, here you go. Ancient sword, all fixed up. So uh, now we just have two more uh, blocks that have the ab abilities to actually do things. And so that's the feeder and the sifter. And so uh, with the feeder, it's crafted with four stone, one bucket, one stone button, two iron ingots, and one glass. And so uh, this will feed your tamed dinosaurs without them having to search for their own food. However, uh, the dinosaurs' heads must be within two blocks of the feeder to be able to work. And so you'll see that there are two sections, you've got one for carnivores and one for the herbivores and so for the carnivores you can put in uh, fish, chicken, beef, pork, uh, eggs and dino steak and then for the herbivores you can put in apples, wheat, bread, melons, mushrooms, leaves, carrots, potatoes, cake, sugarcane, flowers, golden apples and ferns and so any of your tamed dinosaurs can just come here and eat from that and not have to search for their own food so it's very useful for that uh, now we have the sifter, which is crafted with five wooden planks, and uh, one iron bar, and then three string. And so what the sifter will do is there are certain blocks you can put in the top here, and it will actually take them and transform them into one of multiple items. So uh, the blocks that are able to go into the sifter uh, include sand, dirt, gravel, grass blocks, clay, red sand, and podzol and uh, the following items can be obtained from any of these blocks in the sifter. Uh, Biofossils, sand, Sauracena, I think it's pronounced, fern seeds, bone meal, pottery shards, Dilophia, Dominican amber, or you, you can get nothing at all. So why don't we test this with some sand? Don't know how long it'll take. Uh, but you can see that going down there, so not actually too long. And you'll get some sort of item out of it most of the time. But not that time, apparently. Let's try to get something this time. And while we're doing that, uh, why don't we move on to the skull lantern, which is crafted with a torch and a skull. And this is pretty much just like the skull, except it emits some light. Uh, now we have the Paleorphe plank, stairs, and slab, which for some reason uh, not enough items reads as a stone slab. But each of these works exactly like regular wood, just with the Paleorphe, so you can craft this with the Paleorphe log. And yeah, so I don't think I need to explain that because it's just like vanilla wood. And we, we once again got nothing. This really isn't working out for us. Let's get a whole bunch of sand. Yep, 
and let's move on to the other blocks while this is going on. Okay, so now we have the ancient wood plate, which is just for decoration. You get three from two ancient wood, and uh, it, it, it's just kind of like uh, carpet in vanilla Minecraft is just kind of there. And the slab is just like a regular wood slab, except uh, it, even though the wiki said it was craftable, it, apparently it did not enough items, it's not a crafting recipe, and that's the same with this uh, ancient stone slab over here. Uh, so, yeah, and when you try to pick it in creative mode, it'll just give you a stone slab for each of the slabs, because that's how not enough items recognizes them, I suppose. Uh, anyhow, so... Now we have the volcanic stuff. So you get four volcanic bricks from four volcanic rocks. You get four volcanic stairs from the volcanic bricks like this. And you get six volcanic slabs from volcanic bricks like this. And they're just kind of for decoration. They don't do anything else. And they're just kind of there, but they look kind of neat with the dark stone brick look. And now we have the ancient stone stairs, which are craftable with ancient stone. However, ancient stone is a creative only block. So. Uh, you cannot get ancient stone stairs in survival. And like I said, the ancient stone slab is not craftable, despite the wiki saying it was. So we have got some sifted items. You've got a couple of plant fossils, a Saracena, we got some sandback, and a Dilophia. So there you have it for the crafted blocks. Alright, so here is our last batch of blocks, the creative only blocks. So the only way to obtain these blocks are, is obviously in creative mode, they cannot be crafted, they cannot be found, and so uh, there are five of them, the time machine, the ancient glass, volcanic ash, ancient stone, and amber ore. So the time machine looks really, really cool. It's got this really neat interface, uh, but it is currently a work in progress block, which would allow you to travel to a dimension known as the past, and dinosaurs would spawn there naturally, as well as some unique dinosaurs that you cannot actually uh, spawn in the overworld. Uh, and they currently are not in the game. And so the machine is activated by, uh, by items called coins, which are not yet in the game. Next we have some ancient glass, which also looks pretty cool, kind of like the time machine. Uh, but once again, this is creative only, and is only used for decoration. Uh, the volcanic ash doesn't really have a purpose, but it's thought to have been what uh, eventually became volcanic rock. And so it's still in the game, but it's not really used for anything and it's just kind of there. Ancient stone is a decoration block and uh, funnily enough there is uh, a craftable block uh, that that is crafted with this even though it's creative only so I don't know why that is. Finally the amber ore uh, it's planned to be spawning naturally in the future and it can be mined with any pickaxe and it'll drop two to three amber which are also creative only items but obviously something's planned for the future and uh, that is it for the blocks, so why don't we move on to the items now. Alright, so the items portion. So as you can see, there are quite a fair amount of items, and so we're going to go through each of these, show the crafting recipes for the ones that you can craft, uh, tell you how to obtain them if you can't craft them, and tell you generally what they are used for. Uh, so we're going to start over here with the bio fossil. So I've talked a little bit about this in uh, part two, uh, part one and I think I talked a little, I mentioned it in the block section uh, but you can obtain this from mining fossil blocks and so you can use uh, these bio fossils to obtain dinosaur eggs and uh, you can place them down to get fossil models. For, for the relic scrap, these are also obtained from fossil blocks and when you put it in an analyzer, you can either get a stone tablet, a broken ancient sword, uh, flint, or gravel. And you need this to craft the analyzer, and I believe you also need the biofossil to craft the analyzer. Uh, and, and it's used to repair ancient and scarab tools, as well as a couple of other things in the archaeology workbench. The plant fossil, uh, you can obtain it from the analyzer uh, by putting items in it. And so... Uh, these can be cultivated into paleorphe saplings, and that's really their only use. Frozen meat. Uh, now, these things are interesting. You can analyze them for DNA or for meat, uh, and you get them from breaking permafrost blocks. You can cook them into steak, uh, but they can also be used as a weapon. So you see this, that's plus 7 attack damage. That's the same amount as a diamond sword. With meat. So, I don't know what's going on there. The Scarab Gem you can get from fossil blocks, 
but there's only a 0.01% chance to obtain them. And that, uh, this makes it the second rarest item in the game. Um, and that's only because the rarest item requires the Scarab Gem to obtain. So, y y you're going to have some trouble finding this. The Scarab Gems can also be uh, found extremely rarely in dungeons. Uh, they can be crafted into Scarab Tools and into the Aquatic Scarab Gem. And they tame T-Rexes. Dominican Amber is very rare from the Sifter. And it'll uh, craft the Aquatic Scarab Gem. And it's decorative. That's about it for it. Here we have the Broken Ancient and Ancient stuff, so you've got Broken Ancient Sword and Helmet, and so these are found in fossils and can be repaired by archaeology workbenches into Ancient Swords and Ancient Helmets. And so, the Ancient Sword can actually cause lightning and fire, and zombie pigments I think become passive or something. There's something like that on the wiki. So, I believe... Dude something with a sword. Yeah. I don't know. It, it says on the wiki that it causes lightning. Maybe you have to have both. It said something about zombie pigmen and not attacking you. I think you might have to have both. Yeah, there we go. So the zombie pigmen you saw got bigger. And I don't think he'll attack you, right? Yeah, see? Yeah, passive. But I don't know about the lightning. I have no idea about that. The next layer, we have a whole bunch of different versions of these up here. We've got uh, dino meat and the dino skull in this first chest. And so with the dino meat, uh, there's different types for each of the dinosaurs. And uh, so they can make one to four different types of DNA uh, when you put it in an analyzer. And it, it's the type of DNA that the meat is. So if you're using Triceratops meat, uh, then you're going to get one to four Triceratops DNA. And so, as you can see, there are all these different types of meat in here. And there are all these different bones and stuff. So there are a whole bunch of these. Um, pretty much For pretty much all of these, I think with the exception of the claw, and then these unique bones. Every type of dinosaur in the game has these bones. So you can see all the skulls, all the arms. Uh, th these are the different ones that have claws. Uh, then all the feet and all the rib cages, the arm bones, the vertebrae. And then these are some of the unique ones. You got a horn, sail, finger, tail club, uh, skull horn, talon, another talon, teeth, tooth. Gastralius and Osteodermis, and then a tooth and a Thagomizer. And so I, these are pretty much useless. They're mostly for decoration. I think the only thing you can craft with them is uh, bone armor. And I think that's about it. Uh, it with the exception of the unique bones and the uh, arm, uh, all, all of them can only be used to craft armor and that that's about it they're fairly useless now we have some more interesting stuff we've got the stone tablet which uh, is like paintings and so you can get these from the analyzer and so let's just go to the back here and start placing them down so they're kind of like uh, more ancient style paintings so you can see all these different things and yeah, it's really kind of cool. It's more ancient Egyptian Herobrine dinosaur. I, I think it's kind of neat. Here we have the pottery shard, which can be obtained uh, from sifting. And they can craft the kylix, the volute, and the amphora. So we'll show that off later. Those are decorative blocks. But other than that, the pottery shirt is useless. Here we have a fossil record, Bones, and so it's a music desk. You can get it from Dungeons. Let's just put that in and listen to it. Sway side to side. I think it's a little over a minute long or something. But, you know, got a nice record to go along with the mod. Here we have ancient figurines. Uh, there are a fair amount of these. These are found in temples. Now, not the jungle temples you may be thinking of. There are actually structures in this mod called temples, and they will spawn in there. And so are there, there are six different models, and uh, there's three possible stages for each of those models. So, 
as you can see in here, we've got broken, damaged, and pristine. And then there's one, uh, the mysterious figurine that only has the one model. Anyways, so let's just place these down. And you can see them. So as you can see, broken. Uh, oh, why is there too pristine? Oh, okay. There's not the. Uh, not enough items is getting confused. It thinks they're all pristine Steve figurines, even though they're not. So, Pig Man, got the Ender Man, and then we have the Mysterious figure. So all of these you can find in the temples in the mod, and yeah, they're just kind of decorative. They don't really do anything, but they're neat. Now we have some weapons. We have javelins. So these are throwing weapons, as you might expect. There are six different types, all the regular kinds like wood, stone, gold, etc. And then there's an ancient one. And so uh, these will spawn in chests and like dungeons and stuff, and strongholds, etc. And so th these are all... Uh, they, they all do the same thing, just varying amounts of damage, except for the ancient one, which I believe summons lightning. This one I'm pretty sure about. I think I tested it before. Really? You, you, you're not going to work for me? I'm sure... I'm sure it summons lightning. I've, I tested it before, and it, it, it worked. Although, maybe it's because I'm in the desert, and you can't have, like, the rain and stuff in the desert. Let's test out here. And in survival too. Yeah, there we go. I think it was because I was in the desert. That's probably the same thing with the ancient sword. Uh, so, yeah, the, these all have varying levels. The wood one, which I forgot to grab, uh, is the weakest stone, then iron, then gold, then diamond. I'm assuming the ancient one is better than the diamond one. But, yeah. So those are the javelins. All right, here we have DNA and eggs slash embryos. So these are all how you're going to spawn in your mob mo mod mobs. And so uh, first off with the DNA, you can retrieve them from bio fossils, frozen meats, or just regular meat and anal analyzers. And then you'll put them into the cultivator and you'll retain either a dino egg or a mammal embryo, depending on the type of DNA. So you've got DNA for all the different types of mobs in the game. And then you've got uh, dinosaur eggs for each of the dinosaurs. You have bird eggs for each of the birds. And then embryos for each of the mammals. And so with the dino eggs, what you'll do is you will place it down on the ground. And with the exception of the sea, an uh, the sea dinosaurs, um, you can just place it anywhere. The sea ones have to be within, I think, two blocks of water. Uh, but you can just place them anywhere. And after... A certain amount of time, uh, they'll hatch. I think it's a couple, just a couple of minutes, not very long. And then uh, same thing with the embryos, except you don't place them down. You inject a mammal with it. So you have a mammal, you have your embryo, and you right-click, and the mammal will give birth within a short amount of time. And with the bird eggs, uh, you you throw them. So, with yeah, you just kind of chuck them. So I think uh, the, these ones. Yeah, I think the cultivated ones will always spawn uh, the birds, and then the dodo, like or the re regular eggs, not the cultivated ones, they will just spawn it one eighth of the time, like a regular chicken egg, I believe. So yeah, and here we have the final row, and none of these have any variations. Uh, they're they're just on their own. And so we're going to start off here with the empty shell and the magic conch. These two items are pretty much the same except for texture. Uh, they are dropped from the Nautilus, and they'll change the Plesiosaur order status. Um, so, the order status is pretty much whether, when it's tamed, it'll follow you, it will stay where it is, or it'll just move around on its own. Uh, here we have some fern seeds, and so the, the fern seeds are obtained via analyzing, sifting, or from, uh, you can find them in permafrost blocks, and so you can plant these under leaves, to get the fern plant and so th these can only be planted underneath leaves if they're not underneath leaves they won't plant and they spread very quickly and so they're pretty much just dinosaur plants herbivores will eat them and stuff 
Here we have the Saracena and the Dilophia. They are work in progress flowers and they are obtained via the sifter. And I, if you try to use bone meal on them, I think the game will crash. So you don't want to do that. Here we have dino steak, which is what you get when you cook any of the dino meat. Uh, however, uh, there, there aren't different types of dino steak. It's just the singular one, so it's not triceratops steak and such. It's just this. And here we have Sio Chio Le, or however you say it. Uh, if you drop it, it will distract a Mosasaurus. So if you're trying to escape from one of them, if you drop it, it'll go after it. And you cook, uh, you get this by cooking a Nautilus. And I believe you can probably eat it because it's like food. But, I mean, cooked chicken soup you can't eat. So, uh, anyways, cooked chicken soup you get from cooking raw chicken soup which I'll show over there because it can be crafted um, and so th this can't be eaten as I said it's only used in crafting so I, f I find that kind of odd I'm just gonna stay in survival until I get a bit hungry can I eat? ah yes you can eat okay so now we have the craftable items and so we're gonna start off with the aquatic scarab gem which is crafted with a scarab gem and Dominican amber and the only use for the aquatic scarab gem is to tame the Sarcosuchus, and it is the rarest item in the game because it has to be crafted with a, a scarab gem. And so here we have the Kylix, the Volute, and the Amphora. So each of these have a few different types, uh, broken, restored, and then some other different types of them. And so all of these are crafted with pottery shards, and they're, they're just for decoration, nothing special. Uh, but you can see there's uh, broken, restored, red figure, black figure, and porcelain for each the Kylix, Volute, and the Amphora. So with the uh, Kylix, you can craft the broken Kylix with pottery shards like this. And for the red figure, porcelain, and black figure, uh, all the these crafting recipes for all three of them are the same with the exception of re uh, replacing the Kylix with either the Volute or the Amphora. So you have two ink sacks, one orange dye, and whatever you're turning into a red figure. Uh, two orange dyes in ink sack and whatever you're turning into a black figure and uh, For porcelain you have two bone meals and one lapis for whatever you're turning into the porcelain and so How you craft the volute is pottery shards like this and the amphora pottery shards like this so as I said they're purely for decoration and Really no other use, but they do look cool here we have Scarab Tools. So these are the strongest in game and you can't re uh, repair them in an anvil. You have to repair them in an archaeology workbench. But be careful because any uh, enchantments you have on them will disappear if you repair them. So you got to be careful with that. And so how you get them is having a Scarab Gem with either a gold or diamond version of the same tool you're trying to make. So. Thank goodness you only need one Scarab Gem, and you don't need like three for the axe. That'd just be crazy. Uh, but you do need either gold or diamond of that version. And you can get your Scarab Pickaxe, your Scarab Axe, your Scarab Hoe, your Scarab Sword, or your Scarab Shovel. And then here, of course, we have the Dinopedia, which is crafted with a book and any type of DNA. And so what this will do is show information on dinosaurs, for example, their hunger level, their age, their health, and what they can eat, and also what item you can order them with if uh, they are tamed. So this is uh, very useful for uh, your taming of the dinosaurs. And also, if there's an egg or an animal that you've implanted an embryo into, you click them on the Dinopedia and you can see how far along it is and how close it is to hatching or being born. So really quite useful. Alright, so now we have the whip which is crafted with three string and two sticks. And so this is only used for riding mobs. If you don't want to ride any of the dinosaurs, you're never going to need the whip. And that's pretty much all you need to know about it. And the skull stick is crafted with a skull and a stick, hence the name skull stick. And so it's for decoration or for ordering certain dinosaurs with the drum. Uh, mainly Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I believe there might be one or two others that it orders. Now we have Skull Armor and Raw Chicken Soup. So we're going to start off with the Skull Armor. Uh, as you can see, you have the helmet, ribcage, shin guards, and the feet. 
and so you can craft them with bones in these arrangements for uh, this arrangement for the helmet with a skull in the middle doesn't matter what type um, for the rib cage you got bones in this arrangement and a rib cage and vertebrae doesn't matter which type uh, you got bones like this and leg bones doesn't matter which type again and then as long as you've got claws and foots once again doesn't matter which type you can make feet and I just realized I said claws and foots nice going brain a anyway so let's stick this on I believe it's stronger than iron but I think it's weaker than diamond let's just get iron right, so you can see it's only missing one and a half armor points yeah so it's got better protection than iron armor does so it is only beaten by diamond and it's actually fairly easy to get because all it requires is the bones and then of course the cooked chicken soup and the essence of chicken or raw chicken soup not cooked I, did, I messed up uh, so the, the raw chicken soup is crafted with raw chicken in a bucket you can cook it into cooked chicken soup and then you can then craft that by putting cooked chicken soup surrounding it by glass bottles and you get eight essence of chickens and so you can feed this to your dinosaurs and it will make them grow by five days so that is very useful if you want your dinosaurs to grow up quickly but it will make them hungry so you gotta be careful of that and finally there are two creative only items in the game uh, that is spawn eggs because of course uh, th th there's a reason you got the dino eggs and not spawn eggs in survival and then there's there's amber and the only reason this is creative is because the only way to get it is from destroying amber ore and that is also a creative only item and so it's currently useless so uh, there's really no point to it it might be have a use in it might have a use in upcoming updates I don't know uh, but yeah, so this has been the blocks and items segment of the mod showcase. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. And uh, Merkman 4, over and out. I'll see you guys in part 3.